Ho, ho, ho! Look at the Christmas lights. Welcome to Plain Time Christmas in July. Welcome to Plain Time Choltec Zealot Binary Edition. And I'm calling it Zealot Binary because here we have the uh, Zealot H743 flight controller that's going to be going into the Sonic model binary. There'll be a separate video about the build of the binary, but this video is about the electronics that are going to go into the model. In this video, I'm going to do basically two things. One is I'm just going to show off. It works. Wow. So cool. And the second part, then I'm going to take you through step by step each individual piece and explain the connections and the wiring for each part of this wiring diagram. I'm doing this because hopefully it will help you. It was incredibly helpful for me to understand what was going on and I thought that uh, maybe it would help you. Some of the uh, things that I figured out were um, took a little bit of digging. So I'll go through that in an exhaustive amount of detail. There will be chapter links in the bottom of the video so you can click through to the part that you want to uh, you want to know about. There'll be things like um, basic servo connections, there'll be things like my two motors with the ESCs, there'll be things like uh, pan and tilt camera, airspeed sensor, uh, LiDAR, and the Express LRS receiver and transmitter that I'm using on this model. So um, let me just show you that everything works. And as you can see, it's, uh, there's a lot going on here. There's an awful lot going on here with this, this ambitious build. This ambitious build that I've got planned for this uh, gorgeous plane. And uh, I hope everything's going to go fine, but I mean, this is a good start. So what I want to do um, is just show you how everything comes together with a working set of electronics for this plane based on the H743 flight controller. So this is a wiring diagram and this is a this is an active this is an active wiring diagram. This uh, is not just it looks like a mess of wires honestly if you look at it but let me show you something here. Um, right here in the middle of the of the board is the silhouette the outline of the sonic model binary that is the plane that this uh, a set of electronics is actually going to be built into. If you can see, there's the nose of the plane, there are the wings, and I'm just trying to keep some of the wires out of the way, and, and this is the tail plane. So what I've done is I've put the flight controller right smack in the middle of the plane, just like it'll be in the, when it's built into the plane. And then I built it out from there. So just to give you an idea of what we've got here, here we have aileron servos. They're basically placed on the wings pretty much where they're gonna be in the real plane. Now there are also flaps in this plane. I didn't put the flaps on because then it's just getting maybe a little too busy. Here at the back, we have our elevator and router servos and so this is the elevator and this is the router I believe and they're placed on the at the back of the plane so everything on here is actually wired to the flight controller exactly how it's going to work when it goes in the plane and we fire it up but it works now it's all connected and it works and I'm going to show you that. So take a look at this. Now what we have here is a smoke saver and if you haven't got one of these get one. Um, they've definitely saved me already on this build and on other builds. It's uh, one of the greatest things you can, uh, little tools you can have when you're building a set of electronics like this. And what it will do is it will actually when the electronics fire up it will automatically interrupt if there's a huge voltage spike, uh, current spike actually, that goes through the circuit, 
circuit which will cause black smoke and bad things to happen, hence the name smoke saver. So I'm actually going to plug that in to my circuit here. And now if you can see, let me just make sure I've got that in the frame for you. All right, so when I press that button, it'll light up like a Christmas tree. Let's see what happens. And here we go. So we have lights. We have telemetry recovered. The radio, the transmitter was sitting here waiting for a signal. And it was it got a signal right here from my radio receiver. The telemetry signal has gone back through. The telemetry is wired up with Yapu telemetry and the telemetry module or the telemetry Lewis script on the radio is now listening for the flight controller to send Mavlink commands through the re receiver back to the transmitter and that's working. And if I go to my computer here, and this one takes a couple more seconds to fire up, the Wi-Fi module over here will actually be starting a Wi-Fi hotspot and there we go. So now we have UAV link, which is the standard hotspot that this little uh, Mavlink Wi-Fi creates. And if I connect to that, then I've got Mission Planner running and Mission Planner now has connectivity to the vehicle. As you can see, it's uh, if I just move the flight controller, I'm getting um, I'm getting movement. And in fact, if you see on the the transmitter as well. Um, you can see this here, this also moves. So the heads up display on the transmitter actually moves at the same time as the heads up display on the computer. So both of them are getting telemetry feeds from the flight controller and it's all working. No lock means I have no GPS lock, which is understandable. I'm in a concrete building, so no GPS and it's gonna keep beeping until that happens. And it's telling me it's disarmed I don't need to explain the Yapu telemetry. There's lots of videos online about it. It's amazing. And it works just great with this setup that we've got here. So let me just uh, demo that everything is working. That's gonna be step one. Now, the last part about everything works is now that I know that my smoke saver has saved me and everything's actually running, well, what I need to do is plug in it with power because the one thing that, about the smoke saver, and I did learn this myself through frustrating experience, is the smoke saver is great. It'll stop you from, you know, over overburdening your your uh, what would you call it, your network, overburdening your network and burning something out. But sometimes you need more juice. That smoke saver will kick in at three amps. If I'm running my motors, those motors are rated at 40 amps per motor. And I'm probably expecting 20 to 30 amps peak. And um, from what I understand it, a standard load might be, you know, 12 to 15 amps in, uh, in this particular, uh, with this particular configuration. Well, if I run my motors, that smoke saver is gonna say, warning, warning, and shut everything off. And now that I know that everything works fine without the motors, what I don't want to have happen, as soon as I fire up the motors, everything cuts out. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to unplug the smoke saver and plug it in with real power. You're watching it here. And we're going to see this model work with everything here plugged in and powered by a 3S LiPo and no smoke. So let's see what happens. And now when we plug in our battery, now we have raw power going into the circuit. And this is going to be the real thing. And it should be the same behavior as before. Everything should come up. The receiver comes up. The transmitter connects. 
initializing. The flight controller starts communicating. Uh, everything's great. The only thing is I've lost again my connection to Mission Planner on the, the PC because I'm using the link through the Wi-Fi, but I can wait for that because now I can show you this working. Let's start with something simple. Let's start with the basics. Let's start with ailerons. So on my transmitter here, I've got my I've got everything set up with a, a model configured and all of the channels set on my transmitter, which I will explain in a little bit more detail at the end. For now, all I need to know is this is my ailerons control and I use mode three rather than mode two. So mode three means ailerons and elevator on my left stick and throttle and router on my right stick. And this is my ailerons. And there we go. Look at that. We've got, we have ailerons moving perfectly, smoothly, no jitter, just really clean, beautiful. Let's have a look at our elevator. There's our elevator. And these are the out of the box uh, servos. I believe they're nine grand, they're unlabeled. Um, may or may not be digital, since I don't say digital, I'm expecting they're analog, but they're the ones that come with the model, uh, with the standard power pack from the model, and I'm gonna be using those, so that's fine. I've got my rudder here, but when I, when I move the rudder, look what happens. I've got nose gear here, and I've got a steering servo set up here that is moving the nose wheel. So I've got not only rudder for flying in the air and giving me your control, I've got steerable nose gear for when, this, when it's running on the ground. Now, since we're talking about the nose gear, why don't we talk about the retracts? Because I've got retractable landing gear. So, uh, that and that works. Um, it's actually going to work quite nicely. I'm going to put retractable landing gear on the nose wheel of the plane and I'm going to have fixed um, wheels at the back, uh, a bit like the way that um, FP Reviews, their aerospace does this on his Maxwell, which is the sonic model binary anyway. Um, retractable landing gear on the front and uh, fixed landing gear on the back. So that should give me the ability to mount camera on the underside of the plane so and lift the uh, landing gear out of the way when uh, the plane's in the air. Well, what else do we have that actually works? Now let's have a quick look at actually. Now what we have, since I've pointed it out, is connecting to the computer and I've got uh, mission planner sitting on the computer here. Well look at that. I've got an airspeed sensor, which is this guy here, and I've got a LiDAR which is this guy here. And if you look at the LiDAR, it's currently reading two meters. And that's because my ceiling is about two meters pretty much above this bench. Well, look what happens if I put my hand in front. So now it's 17 centimeters above. Now as I move my hand down, it goes down to nine centimeters. That's actually as low as it will read. So it reads nine centimeters on the ground. And if I move my hand up, the range finder is working. So we have LiDAR uh, rangefinder telemetry and that will help with landing the plane. When it comes into land, it can measure where the ground is to make sure that it, it, um, it lands cleanly. What we also have here is we have our airspeed sensor and this is the pitot tube. This doesn't sense anything. This is the sensor down here. This is the, the air, the input. The pitot tube is the input for both dynamic pressure and static pressure. The dynamic pressure is the pressure coming in from the front of the plane, the wind uh, speed as the plane rushes through the air. And as you can see here, there's an arrow on the pitot tube. Now, it's really hard to see on the, um, on the plastic when you get it out of the bag, so I, I drew, drew over it in a little arrow. That arrow is not, not um, drawn there, that was just me but there's actually an impression on there of an arrow that points forward. So that needs to be pointing to the front of the plane. And there's a little hole here, probably hard to see, but there's a little hole in the front. And that hole is for the air to rush in and feed in through to the airspeed sensor here. Here is our back hole, and that is the, the hole to measure the static pressure. And that is basically the, the pressure at the side as the air rushes past. Now this needs to be mounted at the front of the plane figured out exactly but it'll probably be on the side on the front 
um, fairly near to the nose. You want it to have it out of uh, prop wash and pretty much and out of the influence of other um, uh, wind rushing around different shapes in the plane. So near the front is probably good. In a, a single prop plane, you put it on the wings, but this is a dual prop, so there'll be motors on each side. This guy will go at the front in the middle. And if I blow on this, you can see that the airspeed sensor actually measures that there was air speeding through the tube. As the, that um, rushes through the air, that will give uh, a reliable um, airspeed measurement. And in that combination with the GPS um, measurement of ground speed, the plane will be able to accurately determine how fast it's going through the air to avoid things like stalling and uh, how fast it's going through uh, along the ground as opposed to through the air to make sure that it gets where it needs to go. So that works. We've got our LiDAR working. Um, we've got our landing gear. We've got here, and I put these onto sliders on the side of the, the transmitter. So if you look at the pan and tilt camera, I've got a tilt on my left slider, and I've got pan on my right slider. Now this is the first time I've done this. Um, I may change how that works. It does seem to work quite well, and so I may stick with that, but it is kind of fun. <laughs> and it'll be interesting to see how this works in the air. Um, the camera that I actually have in here that I'm using for demonstration purposes, A, it's not wired up yet, and B, it's not the camera that I'm going to be putting in here that's a little late arriving. It's supposedly going to be delivered in the next couple of days. This little Foxier Razor Nano uh, camera is actually going to be mounted in the tail um, at the back of the plane looking forwards. So that will be kind of interesting. The last thing we need to do now is we need to see the motors running because that's, well, that's not quite everything, but that's everything that I have on the board right now. So let's do that. So what I need to do in order to make that work is I'm going to have to arm the plane. Because there's no GPS, the plane won't arm by itself. I need to do a force arm. So I'm going to do a force arm. Notice the Yapu telemetry tells me that this is armed now and those motors should work. So now if I throttle up, and there we go, we have working motors. There's two motors spinning. Now obviously I don't have propellers on, not ready for that yet, but what I do have is A, two motors spinning, and B, they're counter rotating. So one is spinning one way, one is spinning the other way. And there is your fully functional Zealot H743 active wiring diagram for the installation in the Sonic model binary. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll actually run through each particular component one by one and tell you about what's connected where and, and how and what I had to do, for example, in configuration in, uh, in uh, RD Pilot in order to make it everything work the way it needed to. So. Uh, if you like this video, please like, please subscribe, because yes, there absolutely will be more as I build this out and turn it into a working flying FPV model, which will be kind of fun. And, uh, and thanks for joining me, Tim the Plane Man, over and out.